Modern day racing games have changed. The question asked now is Gran Turismo 5 or Forza Motorsports 4? But has anyone or did anyone ever think to stop and ask possibly one of the oldest racing game questions? What is the best Nintendo 64 racing game? As one of the first 3D capable home consoles, there was a lot more opportunity for racing games to be developed more believably, and many developers, indeed, took advantage. With fantastic games such as Cruisin' USA, Star Wars Episode 1 Podracer, you know, the Podracer game, we all hated Anakin... Lego Racers, F-Zero X, Road Rash, and many, many others coming to the Nintendo 64, it seemed racing games were the way to go with the new three-dimensional technology. However, no racing game could possibly compare to the two biggest heavyweights on the Nintendo 64, if not all the Nintendo racers now and forever. I speak, of course of Mario Kart 64 and Rareware's Diddy Kong Racing. I was lucky enough to own both of these games, and therefore, in comparing them, I have little to no biased, nostalgia-based decisions on which one is better. One is a multiplayer masterpiece, while the other one containing an actual story that makes some amount of sense. Which one is better? Let's do some research, shall we? Well, after hours of extensive research, I believe I have some facts to share with you, starting with Mario Kart. The sequel to the Super Nintendo's Mode 7 Splendor, Super Mario Kart, Mario Kart 64 upped the ante by adding four-player support and 3D graphics. Directed by Hideki Kono, a previous director on several other Mario games, and produced by Shigeru Miyamoto, a man whose legacy I shouldn't have to explain. The game began development in 1995 under the name Super Mario Kart R. Now, where have I heard that name before? Oh my god! Nintendo quickly changed names to avoid a lawsuit from Sega, and the game was released February 10, 1997. The game met a lot of praise, and to this day is still considered one of the best games ever made. Now, Diddy Kong Racing has a bit of a different, more complicated story. As a game being developed by Rare, you know, the people who made one-fourth of the best early Nintendo titles and shed it all away. This is them before we hated them. Fresh of the success as a second-party developer for the Super Nintendo, Rare was setting their eyes on the new system, the N64, and they had a few ideas in mind. Not only would they be working on the groundbreaking GoldenEye 007, the game that shaped modern-day first-person shooters, or on how multiplayer on them would work, but they were working on a small racing game. Actually, before it was ever even a racing game, it was an RTS game, with a caveman time travel theme. When they realized that the idea wasn't the best, they decided to start on a racing game, but with no intention of adding Nintendo characters. In fact, Nintendo knew nothing about this project in its adolescence. The game was originally called Wild Cartoon Kingdom, and got the solo adventure idea from Disney World, and wanted to put something similar into a racing game. The game then had three more changes. The name was changed to Adventure Racers, then it was decided that this game would be the sequel to the rare developed NES game RC Pro-Am, and would be known as Pro-Am 64. However, after showing the game to Shigeru Miyamoto, he offered the developers the use of Diddy Kong, similar to how Miyamoto also suggested to put the Star Fox series into Dinosaur Planet. But we are here to talk about good games. Anyway, with Miyamoto trying to change their game, Rare at first was upset, but went through with the character edition and all in all completely changed the tone of the game. In addition of Diddy Kong, they also added a Kremling from the Donkey Kong Country series, interestingly enough looking the way he would in the upcoming Donkey Kong 64. Some characters that actually went with the game, Timber, Tip Top, etc., and two characters that Rare was hoping to introduce to audience before they got their own games, Banjo from Banjo-Kazooie and Conker from Conker's Bad Fur Day. With all these changes in place, this game was released November 21st, 1997. It ended up being the fastest selling game in 1997. Now that we know the history, let's move on and talk about the actual games. First, we talk about the story. Mario Kart 64. Mario and his friends decide to race. Seriously, that's about it. I could find some crazy fanfiction if you'd like. Now, Diddy Kong Racing actually has a story. Not that that is necessarily a good thing, but it adds quite a bit of dimension to the game. Tipper the Tiger's parents go on vacation and leave their son in charge of the island they live on, leaving him and his friends to race for fun. Their enjoyment is derailed when an evil intergalactic pig wizard named Wizpig arrives at a peaceful Timber's island 
and attempts to take over after he conquered his own planet's racetracks. He turns the four island's guardians, Tricky the Triceratops, Bubbler the Octopus, Blue the Walrus, and Smokey the Dragon into his henchmen. The only solution available to the silence inhabitants is to defeat Wizpig, an elaborate series of races that involve cars, hovercrafts, and airplanes. Drumstick the Rooster, the best racer on the island, failed the challenge and was transformed into a frog by Wizpig's black magic. Timber recruits a team of eight racers, Diddy Kong, the first recruit, Conquer the Squirrel, and Banjo the Bear, recruited by Diddy. Crunch, the Kremlin, Diddy's enemy who follows after him, Tip Tup the Turtle, TT the Stopwatch, Pipsy the Mouse, Bumper the Badger, and inhabitants of Timber's Island. Seriously, that's the story. And the real bitch about it is that this story is never really explained in the game itself. This was still a time where the game developers put novels in their instruction books. But still, it's a story nonetheless. What were you expecting from a racing game where the main antagonist is a giant evil pig? As far as story goes, it's kind of hard to say who wins. Yes, I know Mario Kart 64 has no story, but to be honest, I like it better that way. Diddy Kong Racing's story is a bit silly, but almost ruins the game for me. But in the end, the story does shape the adventure, and I am a fan of adventure. Diddy Kong takes this one. Now for controls! Mario Kart 64 has some of the tightest controls in any game I have ever played. Fact. You know you are good or bad depending on the people you play with. I have seen some incredible things done in Mario Kart 64, and the controls are a big part of that. Combined with the use of items and how controllable and effective they can be, based on you, the player, made it very interesting and gave a sharp learning curve to the game. If you don't know how to slide or shoot green shells, don't expect to get past 100cc. In Diddy Kong Racing, the controls are a little harder to judge, mainly because of the three different vehicle choices. Now, in my opinion, I would prefer one very well-tuned vehicle to three slightly off-ride. Car performs best, but still at times can feel pretty awful. It can just take too long to regain speed and momentum. That you will be restarting races over and over again because of how far you can fall behind. And the ice! DON'T GET ME STARTED ON THE ICE! The, the controls on Sherbert Land in Mario Kart 64 feels exactly as it should on ice. Any ice or snow levels in Diddy Kong Racing, FORGET IT! The plane is alright, but oftentimes the courses feel too small for the plane to really give the feel of flight. It gets very claustrophobic very fast. The hovercraft is probably the most fun as it feels the most unique, but in the end, it's tough to control. Mario Kart 64 takes this one easily, and this is a big one. Your controls are the most important part of a racing game. Without tight controls, the game can become very frustrating. For the actual gameplay, in Mario Kart 64 you have four different circuits that each have four very unique and distinct courses. There are four different difficulty settings, the fourth of which is a mirrored mode. The thing that makes Mario Kart 64 so great is the uniqueness of each course, from a western train chase to a road made of rainbows in the sky. The tracks in Mario Kart are breathtaking many of which have their own shortcuts and simple tips to get the best time. Mario Kart becomes a game of OCD in a way, being able to watch your replays and constantly attempt to knock a few seconds off a lap time. Where some people see this as tedious, others welcome the challenge. While racing other opponents, whether they be three real friends or the AI, your goal is to try and get first place in total points after all four races per circuit. Duh. What makes the game especially interesting is the learning fairness curve, and I use the term fairness lightly in this game. If you are in first place, you're the most likely to get shitty items, but the people behind you, especially those behind fourth place, get even more powerful items that could potentially wreak havoc on everyone still ahead of them. This adds a feeling of hope to the game, so even if you have fallen very far behind, you can still catch up. The simple gameplay offers a lot of replayability, and very rarely frustrates you further than just losing a race because of a blue shell. God damn blue shells! For Diddy Kong Racing's gameplay, I would like to focus on the adventure mode, since that is the main mode in the game. There are five different zones, each with five different races, including the boss races. Although it may have the sound of more is better, most of these courses leave a lot to be desired, and are very short. Switching between planes, cars, and hovercrafts really doesn't add much more life to the levels either. The boss races are pretty fun, but at times can be impossibly difficult if you aren't bringing your A game. The other frustrating side of this game is the silver coin pickup, where not only do you have to drive through the course again, but this time you have to collect silver coins and win the race. And I mean win the race. Kind of a lot to ask for. In addition to having to do the silver coin pickup, you also have to find a key hidden in one of the four tracks in the five different areas to unlock that area's minigame, but we will talk more about the minigames themselves later. The keys range from easy to find to incredibly difficult, 
and it feels very odd to be searching for a key while you are in a race. When looking for the key, you don't have to win the race, just find it. Diddy Kong Racing's weapon style never rubbed me the right way either. There are five different types. Balloons, projectiles, shields, magnets, boost, and trap. When you pop one of these, you can use the item. However, if you hold the item and hit another of the same color of balloon, you get an upgraded version of said weapon. However, for example, if you're trying to get a fully upgraded rocket power-up, the most you can get is two upgrades. And if you accidentally run into a booster balloon, you lose your rockets. Stuff like that really ruins the game for me. In the gameplay aspects, I have to go with Mario Kart 64, if only because of the originality that went into every course in the game. Next is unlockables, a fairly important part of replayability. Sadly, all you get in Mario Kart for fully completing every course in the game is an alternative cover screen, which is cool, but not much to gloat over. On the other hand, Diddy Kong Racing has an unlockable mirror mode and two unlockable characters. A freaking rooster and a time clock! What more do you want from your game? For that reason, Diddy Kong wins in that respect. Although graphics and sound aren't everything, you must take them into some consideration. It's a pretty even split for me. Diddy Kong Racing has the superior graphics, especially given their fully 3D rendered characters, whereas Nintendo still used 2D sprites and the power of magic to make them look 3D. In the music department though, Mario Kart destroys Diddy Kong. Just every course with its own song that sounds like nothing else makes for a much more enjoyable experience for my ear holes. Now for a bit of a final rundown, where I will just talk about a few forgotten things. Both games contain some sort of mini-games, but Mario Kart's Balloon Burst will always remain my favorite. Although stealing eggs in Diddy Kong's Racing was fun, it just did not create nearly enough tension amongst friends. I'm sure many of you will disagree with me, but I must say that I feel that Mario Kart 64 is the far superior title when comparing it to other N64 racing games, with Diddy Kong Racing as a close second. If you have any thoughts on the matter or have your own suggestion for a video review or game comparison, let me know in the comments below. I hope you guys enjoyed this first Red Panda review. If you guys have any other comments, questions, or thoughts, please feel free to comment below. Like and favorite this video. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Do ever forget to share love. I'm Red Panda Gamer. Thank you guys so much for watching.